Hi, this is Connie Smith with OSU Extension in Fairfield County. I'm very proud to have my master gardener, Keith Icorn, with me. And we're going to do another little YouTube on In the Garden. Keith is uh, our vegetable gardening guy. That's who we go to is Keith Icorn. He also um, is our team leader for the AHA Children's Museum Vegetable Garden. So, Keith, thanks for being here. Appreciate that. Um, so I know you're you're an avid gardener, but you garden a lot in the Pickerington Community Gardens. So let's kind of help our listeners understand. Why do you think people garden? Well, probably most of all, just because they love the garden. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you can say money gardening. Uh, it's good therapy. Like a high state has a garden over there on their farm on Lane Avenue for cancer survivor patients to come over. And garden and then use those vegetables for your diet yeah. to help with cancer. Yeah. Uh, and then you can save money by gardening, by canning and freezing what you raise. So and, and, and you're pretty, um, you have a really cool garden at Pickerington Community Gardens. Tell our listeners, let's say we're a beginning gardener and maybe we want a garden like in our landscape or we, we have a little area out back. Um, good exposure to sunlight. That's a must. Uh, plants uh, require a lot of sunlight, hopefully 12 hours a day at least, if, yeah. you, if you can have it, so yes. And certain crops like onions, if you want to raise onions for slicing, they require 12 to 14 hours of daylight. So yeah. it's important to have, you know, good exposure to sunlight. Yeah, and right now, even though we, I, I kind of don't believe it because we've had rain every weekend, on every weekday it seems like for the last month, Water is important in a garden, isn't it, Keith? It is. Uh, it can be. It can be up too much, or not enough. Yeah. So yes, it's, it can be so, a problem both ways. <laughs> so if you're siding your garden and you think I've got the perfect spot at home, access to sunlight. That means you can't plant it under a shade tree and expect it to grow. You need a good water source. And the other thing you might think about is, is it close enough to the kitchen? I could grab a ripe tomato and use it when I'm cooking. And is it close enough to my house that I, I, I can harvest and I can do some things and, and it, close enough that, that I'm going to think about eating something fresh out of my garden every evening when I'm preparing that evening meal, wouldn't you say? Right. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> and you probably should have good drainage too. So you absolutely. Don't, you don't want to plant it where you know, it's going to lay in water yeah. every time it rains. So. Yeah. Soil is important. Soil is important. Soil is very important. So um, let's say, Keith, that we've scoped out the area. Uh, we've turned off the water spigot upstairs, and we're, we're not getting those weekly rainfalls. When can a person think about putting vegetable seeds in the ground? Well, <clears throat> first of all, there's two types. You have cool season crops and the warm season crops. So as far as the cool season crops, stuff like peas, onions, cabbage, lettuce, cauliflower, and all those type of crops, uh, I shoot for about the middle of April. And my rule of thumb is when it's dry, the ground is dry enough to work, yeah. you know, put a rototiller in or however you're working it up, that's when you can start planting those crops. So it's, like I say, it could be earlier in April, it could be later in April, depending on the type of yeah. spring you have. But I always shoot for about the middle of April. And you said something that, that is so true. When the ground is dry enough to work. Right. That's it, really key, isn't it? Very, very much so, because you don't want to be planting crops in mud. You want the ground dry. So, but it doesn't have to be real dry, just as long as it's not sticking to the wheels of yeah. your rotor tower. Yeah. Then, then it's good dry enough yeah. to work. The rule of thumb is if you take dirt out of your garden and you pick it up, and it forms a ball, oh. you need to go sit in the easy chair right. for a little bit. Right. But right. if you pick it up and it filters Cobbles. through your hand, it's dry. then it's time to get busy. Um, so, so let me ask you this. I might go ahead and plant some things in the, in the ground in April, but I can continue to plant seeds Almost into the fall, can I, Keith? Uh, yes. A lot of the crops you plant in the spring, like cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, turnips, lettuce, 
those, those can be planted again in late summer for a fall garden. Yeah. In fact, the best cauliflower I've raised. Uh, I actually harvested the Monday before Thanksgiving. So you, really? It, it, yeah, it goes that late. If you have a fat cauliflower, it heads up best when the temperature is between 55 and 65 degrees. Yeah. So you don't want to raise it in July. You want yeah. to have it ready to harvest before then or plant it late in August for a fall yeah. garden. So so like for our listeners, let's say you you know you buy packs of seeds and you don't have a very big garden and you don't use that entire pack of seeds, you don't have to waste them. You can save them and plant some of them clear up until fall. So you want to think about that as well. Now, I asked you to come here today because I, I know enough about you to know that if you're starting seeds, you probably are going to do it the most economical way you can do it. And I truly say that to you as a compliment. Right. So I asked you to come because really, Keith, a Chinese takeout carrier. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> that works. That works. That works. You don't have to go to a lot of expense to raise, you know, your own plants from seeds. And then I'm talking like peppers, tomatoes, cabbage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some people like... Uh, squash, cucumbers, and you can plant them this way. Yeah. Um, but there, there's a little bit different tricks to different types of seeds. Okay. So, <clears throat> what, you, out. what I want to start with, you now, far as, first thing you need to do is order your seeds. Decide what seeds you want to plant. Yeah. So you get your seeds. That's one expense. The next expense you're going to have to buy is get, get what you, uh, it's called a seed starting mix. Okay. Okay, this is seed starting. This is to start your seeds and then after they after they started then we'll take and transplant them to individual trays like this okay so kind of like this too. Uh, right so uh that, that's what we started in or what i started them in is the seed starting mix so and and this again is prepared uh so there's no bacteria in it you okay. know it's heat it's processed with heat and so forth to kill any bacteria it's in a sealed package so you don't have to worry about introducing bacteria in this system. And, that, and that's very important, important for starting seeds because you, you certainly don't want to moisten this. This is dry mm -hmm. and you have to add water to it to, to plant your seeds in. Okay. But you don't want to take potting mix after you've moistened it and put it back in the bag and save it for later because once you've moistened it, it's going to form bacteria. Okay. So if you try to use it again, so you really your want seeds to, won't even sprout. Yeah, you want a sterile mix to get you started. You want a sterile mix. Okay, perfect. Okay. And the same same way with your containers. Whatever you use for a container, you want to make sure it's been washed or sterilized. Do you use bleach to sterilize? Uh, well, yes. E either I use hot water and, and soap, uh -huh. and then uh, I use like a Clorox and water mix. You can use anything to, as a... A sterilizer, uh, yeah. but you can spray alcohol on it. That'll work too. Okay. Just okay. you know, anything, any type of uh, sterilizer to, to to kill the bacteria. So okay. that's the first thing you have to do. And, and once you use your trays, you know you can use them again if you clean them yeah. properly. And yeah. this this tray here I use has been I've had this for over twenty five years. Yeah. So we, you know. You so how long do we reuse the Chinese takeout? Ah, uh, well, I mean, I've, I've probably been on three or four seasons already. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can, you can you can throw away if you get a new new Chinese takeout. Yeah. But, you know. Uh, oh my gosh. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, you, but, that, but no, I, I, the, the I, plastic and they last a long time. Yeah, I I want our listeners to understand. I asked Keith for a reason because I walked into a box store. And there's just all kinds of stuff you could buy, and you could get thirty or forty dollars in starting right. a a dollar packet of seeds, right. and you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Yeah. And yeah. then <clears throat> now, after you have your trays and your seed and your seed sledding mix, and the next thing you're going to need is light. Okay. So they now make LED grow lights. Okay. Which they only cost about twenty dollars for a forty-eight inch. Yeah. And uh, it's I if you're going to buy new lights, then I recommend buying them because they're, they're very intense light and they don't use a lot of electricity. Okay. So, you know, but if you if you don't have to buy one, if you have a shop light, that'll work just fine. Or you can put fluorescent grow light bulbs in them if you want. I, I find that regular white light works fine for me. So 
You don't have to go to expensive grow lights, but okay. you know they, they are helpful in some ways. So, okay. uh, but if like I say, if you're going to buy a new one, buy a, buy an LED. LED lights. Absolutely. Now, <clears throat> as far as a heat source, I don't recommend buying a heating pad for this. I've had experience with that, and actually got the seed starting mixed too hot, and the seeds wouldn't sprout. So what I use is my hot water tank. After I plant the seeds, set them on top of the hot water tank. There's just enough heat coming up through that. It works perfect. Really? So you 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 know you don't have to go to a stretch. You can use other thing. You can use your dryer. Yeah. You can top use the, the top of your refrigerator. Anything yeah. where some heat coming up through. Yeah. Um, you know it, it'll work, and uh, so you don't have to do. This. But you will need light. That's light, that's light important. is for sure. Yeah. So so the way I do, I mix up this with some water. And you just want to moisten it. You don't need to get it real wet. And then what I do is I just take a little block of wood and pack this down a little bit. Uh, you know, just to level it out. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll mark rows in this, okay? And I keep them about an inch, inch and a half apart, okay? And then it just gives me something to plan in. Oh, wow. So you just... So the little block of wood is what makes your rows. Right. As well. And you can use anything. You can use a pencil or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever you have handy. You, you don't have to go buy a How special How many seasons does a block of wood see? <laughs> that is brand new. So. <laughs> this is brand new. Okay. <laughs> but then <clears throat> then you select. Now, these are pepper seeds. Okay. Um, tomatoes, cabbage, cauliflower, you know, any type of seeds you, you need to start for plants. Mm -hmm. All I do is just set them in these rows. Okay. And I use little tweezers because it's it's easier. Just easier. It's just easier for me. Uh, and I put them about an inch apart, okay. And you know, it, it, you don't have to be real precise with this. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, Turn the shit up. Look at that. Just a little mini garden. How cool is that? Now, you may not think you can get a lot of seeds in this yeah, little container, right? but I actually planted five dozen impatient seeds in that and transplanted. Are you kidding no, me? It, it, it actually held five dozen impatient. And you can easily put, you know, a couple dozen or three dozen of peppers, cabbage, that, uh -huh. you know, you can put a lot of, in a small container like this, a, a lot of plants. And in these bigger containers, a lot more. So yes. if, if you want to go there. But, you know, for, for small amounts, these are perfect. Yeah. And then beautiful beautiful part about this is you have a lid to put on and cover it with. Okay. Which, you know, when it's sitting on top of your heat source, it evaporates the moisture, condenses on top of the lid and runs back down on. Even like the even like the top of your refrigerator would be okay. Same same thing. Just to get them sprouted. Just to get them sprouted. Okay. <clears throat> now for peppers and so forth, uh, tomatoes, cabbage, I just take a little little soil and put it on top. Okay, just enough to cover, mm -hmm. about a quarter of an inch, and I just and tamp, it, back tamp down. it down, and just after that, I take my spray bottle with water in it and just moisten it. That's all you have to do. Yeah, and it's not soaking wet. It's either. not soaking wet. You don't want to get it real wet. You just want to soak it, just okay. or moisten it. I should say right. moisten it's the better word. Now, if you if you want to plant seeds that are real small, these are basil seeds. And they're very tiny. Okay. Now, there's other seeds like impatience. They're very tiny. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there's a trick to planting those. These type of seeds need light to sprout, and they do not want to be covered with any soil when you set them on. So you just set them on the surface. Okay. And they're kind of hard to see because they're so yeah. tiny. Uh, so and they're dark. It, and yeah. they're dark to boot, so you kind of yeah. have to watch where you're putting them. And then... You know, after you set them on the surface, again, just keep them moist, okay? And you just, you never covered Never those, uncover. Never, never tamped cover. those down at never all. Never do, do anything. You just set them on top of the surface. Put your lid on, and again, put it on top of your heat source. In my case, it's a hot water tank. The moisture evaporates, condenses against the lid, drops back down on. And then every day, what I'll do is take the lid off mm -hmm. and come back and just use my spray bottle and moisten them again. Just just enough, just enough to keep them moist. Okay. That's all you have to now, do. Now, let me ask you this. In this whole process, when do you do the misting? Do you do it like morning or just any time? Any time, just anytime. once anytime. a day. Okay. If, if you have time in the morning, do it in the morning. If it's night yeah. in the evening, yeah. just once a day. It's all they have to be wow. uh, moistened. 
and that because there's going. enough there's enough water condensing against yeah. it it'll fall down now if you're using trays like this um all i do is just take a piece of plastic wrap and you know it's just your good old kitchen plastic wrap just put put it over top of your tray because i don't have a lid for this yeah and just well it is 25 years old well you, you might true. have lost the, you might have lost no, the lid they didn't come with lids back then. <laughs> yeah. so but this this works equally as well yeah and it'll condense against this and the same thing if i'm planting pine seeds on it or small seeds just take this off and spritz it with water and put it oh, back you on your own heat source wow. so it works very easily but, but the key is with small seeds is do not cover okay and keep them moist and keep them moist and, and, a, and the light coming through your basement window is enough light you don't have to put them under the okay all right so you know they do need light but but not, no, not intense light. not intense light okay. so so that's that's what i do now after the seeds sprout and, and you want be want, want to be careful here don't plant peppers on one side and cabbage on the other because they sprout at different rates yeah so what you want to do is plant all peppers or all cabbage right now you can plant red cabbage and green cabbage right. or cauliflower and cabbage because they're they'll spread at the same time yeah. but you don't want to mix vegetable plants right you kind of want to because keep peppers it. will take about two weeks to sprout okay cabbage will be sprouting in three days oh my gosh so that's why you got to check on them every day yeah now as soon as they start to sprout what you want to do is take your lid off or your cover okay, and then put them under your grow lid. Okay. The reason is if you let them sit on your heat source, they'll grow tall and spindly. And, not, and, that, and they won't be nice sturdy plants. Yeah. So you want to, as soon as you see hints of them sprouting, only if it's only 5%, that's enough. Okay. Get them under the grow lights immediately. Okay. Perfect. Don't, don't wait another day because they can grow too fast and be spindly. Yeah. So get them under the grow lights as quick as you can after you see signs of them sprouting. Okay. And then <clears> once <throat> you get them sprouted, when do you know when it's time to hey, transplant in the pots? These, these are plants, when you see the second set of leaves starting to develop, like these two okay. right here are perfect. Sure. These are a little past because you can almost see the third set yeah, starting exactly. to come there. Sure. When they're this size here, Mm -hmm. What I do is take this tray, mm -hmm. okay, and then you put, you don't use seed starting mix in these, you can use potting soil mix. Okay. And you can see it has the right amount of vermiculite and prolite in it. And all I do is just take my finger and poke a little hole in, mm -hmm. and then just take, um, you can take any tool you want. I use a pen knife. But you can see the roots on those. Oh my gosh, look how nice and healthy yeah. those roots look. Yeah, they're, they're coming yeah. nice. And like I say, when the second set of leaves develop, and then, then all I do is just put them in there, kind of tap the soil down around them. And uh, this is very easy to do. It just takes a Oh, bite. wow. So gosh, that's a great, I can't imagine. Yeah, they, they, they grow real nice in this seed starting mix. And, and they'll do the same in these containers, mm -hmm. and that's what you want. You want a good root system when yeah. it comes time to transplant. So we'll just go ahead and do the, the whole tray. And you can use a little extra mix to tap it in and make sure all the roots are covered. Mm -hmm. So this this is very simple and easy to do. doesn't take very long. So there's, oh my God. There's some nice roots. Yeah, there really are. And I just try to get the roots down in that hole. And then just tamp the soil around it. I use my fingers. And, uh, yeah, right there. See, it's, but, you know, the key is when the second set of leaves start to form, mm -hmm. that's when you want to transplant them into your individual trays. So this is a very simple process. Now, after you get to this stage, You'll need to give them some water. So what I'll do is I just use, uh, this is just a distilled water bottle, but any milk jug or anything you have okay. handy, I put the water in and just pour enough in them to moisten the soil. You don't need a yeah. lot of water. And again, when we're in this stage, put them in a tray and put them under the glow lights. Okay. And <clears throat> the light you want to keep, uh, when they're in this small stage like this, they put two to three inches above them. Okay. At, at least no more, no closer than two inches. Okay. 
And when they get to this stage, uh, you can move it up four to six inches, and then as they grow, you may want to move the light up higher. You, okay. You, they don't have to be, the light does not have to be real close to the plants. Okay. So, so let me ask you this. You know, we're sitting here middle, right into March. Are, are you thinking about really getting started with seed starting now? Because Well, actually, I, I've already started some of them. Yeah. You know, peppers, uh, cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, any of those type of plants. Uh, now, how let, are you cold, lettuce, lettuce yeah. is another. Uh, I'm shooting for the middle of April to set those in the yeah. garden. Because when it's dry enough to work, you can set cool, cool crops in. Cool crops but out. how will you hold those from now? Well, <clears throat> these peppers are, are pretty slow growing. Like okay. These were starting the first of February, and I'm just now <gasps> Oh, my gosh. It took that long to get yeah, to this stage. To get to that stage. So even though I'm not going to set these in the garden until the middle of May, yeah. It's gonna, just, it, they're, they're kind of slow, so they'll, they'll take a long time. Okay. Uh, like the, the brassicas, like the, you know, the cabbages and Brussels sprouts mm -hmm. and California They're a little faster. They're faster, so you, you, I still start them in the first two weeks of February okay. because I'm, I'm aiming to put them in the garden the middle of April. Okay. So okay. I'm backing up, you know, yeah, about eight, eight to ten weeks. Yeah, about and, eight. And these a little bit longer because they take longer to grow. And... Um, if you want to slow them up, and what you should do with plants anyway, is when they get close to time to sending them out in the garden, mm -hmm. you want to harden them off. It's called hardening them off. Okay. So what you do is you set them outside in a shade. You know, you don't want to put them out in direct yeah. sunlight and really yeah, dry them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you put them in a shady area, and, and they'll take the cool weather. So, you know, just... just Set them outside and let them harden up. Now, if it's going to get cold and frost at night, right. you might want to move them in, inside, inside to, to yeah. keep them from getting frost on them, especially pepper plants. Yeah. I mean, you don't want them frosted. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, impatience or any any flower that's going to right. be killed Absolutely. by frost. But cabbage and cauliflower, and that, they'll, yeah. they'll take a frost. So that's why I put them in a the garden then, because yeah. frost, cold weather doesn't hurt them. Yeah. Wow, what an exciting time for seed starting with our master gardener, Keith Eichhorn. I hope we have brought you uh, kind of the easy way to get started, just, um, you know, getting started with seeds, uh, a very inexpensive way to get started. Uh, as you can see, Chinese takeout containers and, and then other containers that you may just have. So, like he said, your biggest investment will be your light setup, whatever that may be. But um, please refer to this video of In the Garden with the Fairfield County Master Gardeners and my special guest today, Keith Eichhorn.